right back, Doc. Hang on. No worries. Okay. Ding dong. What's up, Prim fam? What's up? What's up? What's up? Uh, so I think you guys hopefully read it in the chat. I think that I have got this echo audio echo thing sorted out. We're going to do one quick test and then I'm going to need you to let me know in the chat if there's an echo. So I'm going to do a testing, testing, one, two, three. Now, Doc, go ahead, please. Testing, 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 one, two, three. And one more time. Testing, testing, one, two, three. All right, guys, let us know in the chat if there was any echo on his testing, testing. And in the meantime, I'm going to get this uh, little thing loaded up here. All right, did Doc sound, uh, did my guest's audio sound great too? Not supposed to say the name already. Does it sound good? All right, dudes, I think we got it. And then how is the audio level? So I'm going to do one more time. Testing, 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 testing. Now, Doc, hit me with a couple testing, testings. Testing, 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 testing. One more. Testing, testing, now, testing, 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 testing. Perfect. Now, no echo, and how are our levels? Is he coming in equal with me? Let me know in the chat. And I am gauging... Okay, so let's do that real quick. So we're going to do a little quick uh, switchy switchy. So we're going to run through all the different views to make sure that there's no echo. Okay, so what's up, guys? Testing, testing, one, two, three. And then here we go is our dual. Doc, hit me with a testing, testing. Testing, testing, one, two, three. And we're going to switch to his single view. And one more time, Doc. Testing, testing, one, two, three. All right. How's the sound, guys? Let us know. He's, so you are a little bit quieter. Uh, I'm going to just turn my volume down just to make sure that we're sort of equal so I'm not overpowering you. Um, that seems like we are ready to go. So uh, before we get started, let's roll the doc. Oh, actually, no, I want to say what's up to everybody. I want to try to make this a tradition like in the old school days and say what's up to everybody that gets here early. So we got Jason Del Fosse. Y'all know he is the uh, Print Life Facebook group. A moderator thank you so much for all your hard work jason got hotbox print studio hanging with us we got inking zinc in the house oox mex sir Giriffy. not i don't recognize that name but thank you so much for being here robert hicks elite pro graphics uh the frank d john skopinski robert hicks oh mike lawson we got uproar in the house we got a hellbox art and screen printing what's up hellbox man it's been a long time I thought we lost you. Glad to see you, see you here. Um, we got CME Creations here. We got Tim McElhenney, One Shot Creations, uh, Scott McKellen, uh, and Louise Inc. So thank you, everybody who got here early, who is actually uh, showing their support by getting here and uh, hanging with us. So let's go ahead and roll this intro, and then we're going to get started on this bad boy in three two one intro that's right monument limited presents the print life live 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 and whoa that was doc what's going on print fam <laughs> hey. beautiful technical difficulties uh what's going on print fam it's your boy cam and welcome to another episode of the print life live video podcast um new format and like like always i'm just bringing in guests instead of me sitting here babbling at you for the next hour and 45 minutes i'm going to actually be able to converse with people that have different expertise in all sorts of different areas now today's guest has spent years developing and researching really what you would consider not so much the seo part i mean he knows a lot about that too but he's really do dove into the technical aspects of site rank and just of create of of putting together a the website that's going to rank and that's that Google is going to almost um, favor. So we're, there's a lot of, there's just a lot of shit to talk about with all that. Uh, and he's put in a lot of time with that, and I feel like he has a really good understanding of it. 
and the goal for today is to extract as much of that information as I can from him for you guys. And you know that's the name of the game here, just trying to help us all be better as print shop owners or even just business owners, not just for, just for screen printing, for business in general. Anyway, I would like to have you all give a huge round of applause to Miss round of applause to Mr. Doc Palmier. Thank you, Doc, for coming on in. Everybody say what's up to him in the chat. How hey, are Cam. you? How are you, my friend? Good, Cam. Doing good. Good. So, uh, I mean, I know your background. I'm, I'm familiar with it. We've had many conversations before I asked you to come in here. Um, this is kind of my thing, man. I've been trying to figure out how to bring guests in so they don't have to do a 20-minute story about how they got started. So what, what, what everybody wants to know is, what got you into the world? What was that little spark, that thing that got you in to site development and then all of the tactics involved with just making a really good website? What got you involved? Okay. So uh, my educational firms rolled out in 1990 and um, that was before the internet. Mm -hmm. An educational program called Space Voyage, that's a STEM program for kids K-20. And uh, so in 1993, when the internet appeared, we started uh, playing around with it in 1996 the internet became kind of usable mm -hmm. so we started creating websites um, I found out pretty quickly that uh, corporate America didn't really appreciate loyalty so around 2001 they started taking advantage of me giving newbies cheap prices and t sticking it to me uh -huh. so I decided to go back and get the equivalent of a doctorate in the internet uh, that took two years <laughs> and then I rolled out my own hosting company Okay. The purpose of my hosting company was just to take care of my own three businesses that I had at the time. Okay. So, uh, so when you own a hosting company, you have to help clients and you have to figure out how things work. And um, so you learn. Yeah. And, of course, the Internet's changed. It's like in version five now. So, yeah. um, so what I was doing was basically serving myself with this hosting company and learning. And then around 2001, 2004 – this Google rank thing became like really important. So because I had a whole history basically growing up in it, um, I started studying it, finding out, you know, like, you know, why does this site do better than that site? At that time, like around 2005, 2006 and there, there really wasn't too much science to it. And you could, you could do all kinds of things to cheat, which they call black hat now. If you do those things now, you, you're banned. I mean, you won't even appear. Right. So you have black hat things and then you have gray hat things. That's why Google changes all their indicators. They're fighting back the cheaters. And then you have white hat. So right. I'm totally white hat. So right. my notion is. And you know, I do, uh, before you go, for, I do definitely think we, uh, we, should, we could gloss over maybe a little bit later the differences between black hat, gray hat, and white hat. Sure. But for now, yeah, keep going. Yeah. So, so what happened was, you know, I'm, everything's going great with my companies and I'm enjoying it. And then uh, in, uh, my dad passed away, and my brother um, was the executor, and he needed help selling my dad's house, which was in northern New Jersey. Mm -hmm. So I said to my brother, um, let me put up a website, and I guarantee you it will be on page one of Google. So uh, we put up a website. Within, you know, within 24 hours, we had eight slots of the first 20. So on page one and page two, we, we own twenty we owned eight of the twenty spaces, right. and all they did was basically took all the knowledge that I had acquired over time, uh -huh. and it's weird because it, it, nothing's constant with Google. Everything's changing. So I always describe it as like looking through a compound microscope, like we could be looking at a worm through this you know bio, binocular microscope, and then it turns over. And then what we were seeing is not what's there now. And that's basically Google. Google's changing all the time. There's something like 300 indicators. Um, I would say, you know, that's the whole pie. Maybe there's 20 that you really want to pay attention to. Mm -hmm. But um, so what I did then, because when I was in graduate school, I love statistics. Um, I got my PhDs. I have two PhDs from University of Nebraska Lincoln, mm -hmm. and uh, so I'm basically a psychologist with another PhD in curriculum, mm -hmm. curriculum design and curriculum development. But anyway, um, I like data. So when we look at Google, and we look at the puzzle being number one on Google, it's all data. It's all something you can measure. 
So I spent like the last um, five or six years figuring out the tools and the uh, processes that we could quickly measure it and come up with actionable steps to increase what we call technical SEO. So there's two types of uh, SEO. One is on-page or technical SEO. That has to do with the site structure, how the pages are actually put together, Mm -hmm. how you name your files, how fast it loads, all that. And then you have off-page SEO that has to do with content. So like the last presenter that you had was talking about being a guest author on each other's sites. That's a great idea to build what they call backlink. So I could write an article on your blog about how to improve SEO, and then I would put my link to my website in there, Mm -hmm. and then that would be a backlink. And if all the people on this webinar were to put a put a, uh, bl- a blog on their w- on their pay- on their website with um, you know get moderator uh, guest editors right you don't want them to have administrative rights then um, so in a nutshell what I've done is spent about five thousand dollars a year for the since 2010 mm-hmm. in uh, investing in in tools that you can use they're, they're real singular I mean they're it's like a, this is a screwdriver. This is a hammer. And it's very, when you're talking about uh, improving your technical scores on Google, it really is. You, for this particular thing, you need this tool. So you would t- so it's kind of small. Once that problem is solved, it's gone. So if everybody who's listening, the way Google SEO works is they kind, of, they kind of do it like chemistry, like a chemistry class. In, in high school chemistry and college chemistry, uh, they don't ask you what you know. They want to know what you don't know. So they give you impossible tests. You may get a four out of 100, and you may be the highest score. Hmm. So at Google SEO is the same way. What you want to do is identify errors, and all, and, and there's a lot of low-hanging fruit. So when we look at your site, it's like, hey, um, this is real easy to fix. Right. And then, of course, you know. But you know, let me let me interject there. What do you do? So what is a? I guess we're going to dive into that later, hopefully. But what is a, a person to do that doesn't have the technical, you know, the technical know-how to to fix things like CSS errors or when there's when there's page load issues and stuff like that, right? right. Here's a here's a common scenario that not only that I've run into. I install my WordPress. Awesome, love WordPress to death. Um, you could have a static site or something not built on a platform like that, right. but. Uh, and then you run these all these different things, and they say, "Oh, you have this many errors, right?" What is a person to do that obviously can't? You can't. Like I run into it all the time, dude. There's these extremely expensive developers that want to annihilate your bank account to fix these things. Right. Okay. So, um, so the best way to explain that is when you relaunch your business. Mm-hmm. We relaunch our our business. We relaunch about every four years, like we do a refresh. Mm-hmm. And then we rebrand ourselves about every 10 years. I just learned that yesterday from a, a content expert out of Chicago. Mm-hmm. When you're going to relaunch or when you're going to rebrand, that's when you would decide, okay, we're going to pivot to a better solution for a site builder. So if you're going to use a, a blog content management system like WordPress, then you, you're gonna you have to put up with the... Uh, things that are bad, all the warts and everything else. When you look at the errors on a web page or on a website, mm-hmm. when we talk about SEO, they're mostly looking at your index page. Mm-hmm. So everything's, you know, if your index page is all screwed up, then you're just not going to rank well. You're just not going to be in the uh, uh, Google My Business three pack. So the notion is some of it you can't do anything about. So there's a website that everybody can go to to check. Uh, all different things. The simplest uh, one you can do. It's a website called GT Metrics, mm. and basically it it tell it gives you like a snapshot of what's going on. Everybody can do it, and you can do a screen grab and put it onto a Word document. Mm. Um, when you do that, then you you find out like what's going on with your page in in the most general sense. But specifically, what you're talking about is it takes some of the errors that are on your pages could take a really long time to fix. Mm-hmm. And it's okay to know that's there. And if WordPress, ha- if a WordPress plugin has an issue, then you can go back to the developer and take the long view. It's, this whole thing is really a long view. It's really an organic improvement. Right. Like buying ads, 
Uh, yes, if you have, if you're going to sell something that you're going to sell for forty nine dollars that costs you a dollar to make, mm -hmm. like an exercise board or my pillow, mm -hmm. you're going to sell a pillow for forty nine dollars. It costs one dollar to make that. You can, in fact, do two. You can do a dollar's worth of advertising to get two dollars worth of um, product sold. But we're selling T-shirts, so I'm trying to help the, the print fam. That's why I'm here. I want to help screen printers uh, get into the you know Google My Business, Google Three Pack. Yeah. So, so what you want to do is you don't want to get hung up on everything. It's baby steps. It's all baby steps. You, mm -hmm. Yeah, if there's something really bad with your site that's causing you to be um, flagged, yeah. you know, banned, you, that, you'll know that because you have no traffic. Right, right. Well, you know, but let me so let me ask you this. You can do. So let's 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 uh, let's I guess start from from uh, from that that idea that I feel like a lot of the print shop or print fam members maybe they have a website. It depends on what platform they've chose to go with it could be all over the place but where do they need to start if they haven't built something yet what is your recommendation i mean obviously i'm biased because i built the wordpress plugin for the software so i want them to go wordpress but we're not we're not being biased here right what are okay, your so, what are your uh, recommendations to get started right so there, so there's two things going on here with your website okay first of all your website is a sales page it's a brochure it's a sales funnel that's technically what it should be. It should get. It should make you money. Mm. All my clients, my uh, docpalmerseo.com. It, it's a white glove. I, I, I don't get to work with everybody because I have to, you know, get along with the people. They have to have intelligence, trust mm. me, and all this. The notion is that you, as you go, you just start at the beginning and just work your way through it. Mm. That's what I say. If you're going, if you're, if you, if you don't have a website at all, then you want to talk to somebody. Because, uh, like somebody said, um, well, the best way to get your keyword is to put it in the domain name. Mm -hmm. I did that. Right. In, in, in 1998, I did that. That right. worked really well in 1998. That doesn't work today because all the domain names are taken. Mm -hmm. uh, when they came out with XYZ, I went to all my clients and said, let me get your domain, uh, cuttingtree.xyz. It was a tree trimmer. Yeah. I mean, you're not going to get cuttingtree.com. So the whole notion of um, how you pick a domain, mm -hmm. uh, there was a domain. Uh, I, I was watching a webinar and it, the, the person had a, uh, the person had a domain name called, you know, somebody's teacher. I went right out to my, I, I have three different registrars that I buy domains from. I went right out and I bought somebody's printer.com. Sure. It well, cost me two dollars and forty five cents. Yeah, and I feel like most of us understand the 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 domain game. Okay. Everyone's race like a rat race to try to acquire every version of the same. You know, it's it's ridiculous. But well, you don't really, want to do that. You I think want, a lot no, of you don't want to do that. You don't want to. You, the, the, the fallacy <laughs> is, if I have Rocky Mountain Screen Printing dot com, uh -huh. I don't need dot org dot net. There's actually over a hundred uh, dot somethings. I mean, there's sure. everything. What you want to do? You want to find something that fits you that works. Okay. You you want it to kind of be cool. You don't want it to be 29 letters long because that will hurt you. People can't remember that. Right. And you want it to be a .com because if you have, like, WhiteHouse.gov, is the is that's that's the federal government. That's Trump. Okay. WhiteHouse WhiteHouse.com is a porn site. Right. So, you, you want to go with .com. Now, after you have your domain, then you want to pick a site builder. Mm -hmm. If if you're going to like you know, I'm I'm really supportive of what you're doing mm -hmm. and this pl this uh, tool for uh, management, screen management. I'm trying to push it to all the screen printers that I know in Denver. Appreciate it. And um, I am. I'm going to be a Johnny Appleseed for that. But if we can get the damn if, thing to work right, we will. If, but go ahead. If we're going to build a website, mm -hmm. we want the index page, the home page, to a score like this. Can you see this? Can you see this piece of paper? Uh, hang on. Let me uh, put this to full view here. There we go. Yep. Okay, so that's a GT metric. That's a GT metrics report of a site that I put up this morning, mm -hmm. and you can see it scores a 97. It loads in 1.1 seconds. Yeah. WordPress will never get there. You can't get there with WordPress. So the answer is, you're going to build a house. Yeah. So your index page is going to be like the welcome mat, and then you're going to have a merchant. You're going to have a store that's going to sell T-shirts in. That's going to be a, in a folder that's called merch. Okay. You're going to have a you're going to have a product folder that has your WordPress in it. Mm -hmm. So we can actually have a we can actually build a site 
that has many, many different applications in it. My sites have all sorts of micro applications built into them. The micro applications, they don't get along, so they, we put them in separate folders. It works really well. If I was yeah. going to build a site, I would, be, I would use the fastest site builder I can, and then I'd also use the best applications that I can. If your application works in WordPress, then I would install WordPress in a subfolder called product or whatever I want to call it. I'm going to have a subfolder called contact me so I can have contact form. I'm going to have a subfolder called blog and so forth. I'm going to have a core that has my index page and about me and all that. So WordPress is, a, is great for CMS and for blogging. Mm -hmm. It's not great for load speeds. Right, You're not going to load. Yeah. Therefore, I don't, if we look at what's going on with the Internet, well, let me cut, let, let me cut you off because you're about to you're about yeah. to dive into something, and I gotta. Oh. So, yeah. so let's say, and this is even as you're saying this, I'm going, oh yeah, I, I kind of get what I would do. Um, as you know, WordPress is beautiful for just managing a, a shitload of content, different pages and right. stuff like that. Right. Now, could one, you have your you you build your your basic WordPress site, but then to acquire the fast loading index page that you want. Could you use almost? Could you have either a static HTML builder or something of that nature that that you build just a singular page that links to all the different things in your WordPress site that loads quickly? Is that an option? So WordPress is a static. WordPress is also a static site. I mean, it, it's it's a CMS, mm -hmm. but it's not Ruby on Rails or something agile like that. Right. But yes, you can do what you're saying. Which all you you want to do it with volition. I mean, the notion that I have over 200 WordPress plugins that are paid for. Mm. Every security plugin that comes out, I buy mm. and I test and I refund 25% of them because you know they don't work. Yeah. But the the problem with WordPress, two problems. One is the sheer hacking yeah. of WordPress. Um, I set up about I set up two sites using my domains. One was hacked, and all the code was gone. It just said silence is golden. The <laughs> other one I set up so that if they if they tried to come in five times, then it would ping my phone. Right. And my phone pinged every minute for four hours. <laughs> yeah. So the yeah, problem they... with security is once you know people are stealing from you, uh -huh. like that's what like Walmart, like if you go talk to Walmart, right. they're like, we know people are stealing from us like thousands of dollars every day. So that's kind of the problem with security on a website. You need security. So if you're going to start out, you should look at a product that's free or paid called Mobi Rise, which is M-O-B-I Rise. And then there's all kinds of plugins for that, but it's uh, it doesn't have it doesn't have a login page. Like when I go to any site, I go to the domain.com forward slash and I type in WP dash admin. If their login screen comes up, it's an invitation to hack. Yeah. Of course, we can cloak that and everything. On the other hand, we can get past this which is the best website builder, what you want to do is you want to make it as good as it can be, mm -hmm. deal with the low-hanging fruit, and then, you know, oh, yeah, you know, I had a 65 Volkswagen for many years, and then, you know, I eventually bought a Saab 9.5 mm -hmm. because I could afford it and I was ready to do that. So that's kind of the way you do it with your website. It's similar to what you're doing with buying a new dryer. You kind of plan for it. And so, so I, and I got to intersect because we're kind of – we're. Um having a hard time staying on point here so if you if you so what it sounds to me like what you're saying is just it's okay to start with wordpress start with that platform get get the shit kind of lined out and then you start focusing on on addressing like page speeds and things of that nature that's what it sounds like i'm hearing but maybe that's not what you're trying to get a, across okay so if you're already using wordpress and you have a website that's functioning mm -hmm. then i would stay with it until you're ready to do a major you know, relaunch or you know, rebranding of what you're doing. Yeah. If you don't have a website, then you should use something like MobiRise that's really fast and really secure because you're going to have to learn something, right? You're, whatever you're going to use, whether you use Pix or whatever you're going to use, you're going to have, there's a learning curve there. Mm -hmm. So uh, if I was brand new to it, I would, I would not use WordPress, except I would use it in a subfolder that drives your, um, you know, store manager, your right. store management system. Okay. Yeah, see, that's that is that is uh, it's tricky because I think that for someone like yourself or even even myself who are semi familiar with all of this web talk and this jargon, the majority of the people here are just like, dude, someone just tell us the simplest goddamn solution 
That's right. <laughs> to build right. to so, build with so it. And there, so a me, lot of them are going to, they're right. hearing this and they're going, what is so, he talking about? Right. So check this out. So let me give you, a, here's an example. The answer in a, the, the single word answer is <clears throat> make friends. That's a single word answer. Make friends. So I'm, I'm learning how to screen print, do live screen printing for my educational programs. Mm -hmm. I've actually approached about 100 screen printers asking them to help me learn how to do this. Okay. Okay? And here's what, how it breaks down. About 50% say sucks to be you. It's going to take you over two years to learn this. Mm -hmm. About 30% will actually sabotage me. For example, say, why don't you go ahead and print water base on top of plastisol? Mm -hmm. uh, some of them, about 15% say, you know, that's really interesting. Like they haven't really thought about like helping anybody. Right. And 5%, which is your group, which is why I'm here to help, <laughs> is willing to share. You're willing to share information. I'm a total water-based printer doing live printing, actually curing with a heat gun because kids are there doing it, middle school kids. Yeah. So my notion is the answer to what you're saying is make friends. That's the answer. So I'm, uh, hey, I'm easy to make friends with. I'm fourth of 12 children. I know how to make friends. I want to learn how to screen print. So you can teach me something. I'll help you. I'll help you. That's just the way it is. If you want to know how to work something, then I'll actually make, you know, I know how to make, I make screen pass, screencasts all the time too. So mine are all instructional. Like here's how this tool works. Here, here's how you do it. Mm. So, but you know, you've you really hit the nail on the head cam and it, it's a really good point. It's so complicated. Mm -hmm. Like, so I started in the beginning and in 2002, my son's like uh, 1995 calling and wants their website back because it was like looked really old yeah. and it was all Frankenstein and everything. So the answer is find people that you trust and trust them. Okay, that's well, that's, that, that, that doesn't, that, I don't feel like that really answered my question. So if you're trying to, if you are a new printer that's coming into this world and they're, it, so fuck, how do they, I mean, maybe that's the thing. So where do they go to find people that they can trust to help them build their website? Are you saying you're that guy? Am I that guy? Uh, I think what well, these, yeah, I think well, what well, our, well, I think what the group members really want to know is what system should they use to, to build a website? Okay. So if you were if you're brand new, you know you're going to learn how to use Wix or you're going to learn how to use WordPress, then you should go out and learn how to use MobiRise. That's what you should go ahead learn how to do, and you should buy a few of the add-ons, MobiClean Pro. You should buy, and you know something that will groom and optimize. But that's it's going to take you longer to learn how to use WordPress than it's going to take you to learn how to use MobiRise because it's a drag and drop site builder. Yeah. And let me just ask you this, Doc, real quick. Is MobiRise your website builder? No, I have about 100 different tools that I use. Uh -huh. So, but, but, I, but I do endorse MobiRise, and okay. I do, you know, the, the, I, as much as I can possibly do it, uh -huh. I will build with MobiRise first. Okay. But if I need to install a store management system made by Cam Irvin, uh-huh that only lives in WordPress, then I will install WordPress in a subfolder. We can have 10 folders with 10 different versions of WordPress running, and we can also have MobiRise running. Right. Because when they go to different folders, it's like going down a road. You're just going down a different path. Uh -huh. So um, that's what I, what I would – if I was new, I would definitely use MobiRise. And if I was an old-timer, yeah. when I when I rebranded, I would switch to MobiRise. Okay. All right, cool. So that's good to know. So, guys, if you're if you're considering building a website or anything like that, it, it sounds like uh, you maybe ought to at least look into MobiRise.com, which is M-O-B-I-R-I-S-E.com. Uh, and, and of course, it's like with anything that you're gonna learn, right? It, there's a there's always a learning curve, and you have to decide what platform you want to go with. So maybe perhaps look into that. I'm sure there's YouTube videos and stuff on how to utilize it. So they they've decided well, they've found their platform. And they know where or what they're going to build, right? They know how they're going to build it. They know how they're going to build their site. What's what's the next step to make sure that they are building the proper site to for for Google to favor it? Okay, so so now we're talking about on site or on we're talking about technical or on page SEO, and so there's a there's just a it's just a bunch of uh, different things on a checklist that you make sure that you do. For example. Yeah. Instead of saying about, you know, say, let's say you have a about me page. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's about underscore me mm -hmm. dot HTML. 
Right. Well, Google doesn't like the underscore. It doesn't like that. If you use about hyphen me dot html, Google actually can read that hmm. and considers it content. It's such a st- it's really a stupid thing to use as an example, but it's one of a thousand different things. So the sooner you learn the correct vernacular, hmm. how to name your pages, and every single page should be named word after word, like describing what's in the article or describing what the page is right. with hyphens. Because right, that's right, what right. Google likes right now. And if they change, then uh, as they change, then we're going to change with them. Okay. Okay, so that's so that's good to know. Um, yeah, I feel like we did kind of – we covered some of this stuff on the last one. Um, if you were – dude, I'm kind of – I'm actually sort of lost right now. So so from there, where do they go? Where does somebody have to go if they're trying to um, okay. put this so thing want to So what you want to do is when you build your website mm-hmm. – some keys okay in my opinion the number one key is google my google my business yeah if you're a small business in phoenix arizona and you are printing t-shirts that you're going to ship nationwide which is you cam yeah you have to be in the google my business three pack that's your goal in life google my business three pack if you go to if you go on a google clear your cache using uh cleaner or something so your cache is fresh mm. then just type uh, t-shirt printer phoenix arizona it will come up with a map and it will show you it will actually show you a map and it will show you uh you know what it looks like and everything like that so here's one i don't know if you can see this here's one that i did for a presenter yesterday can you see that yeah okay so yesterday i listened to a expert uh this guy was an expert on content so then I contacted him and I talked to him uh, through email and I said, let me do, let me scan your site. Yeah. And he's not, his company with 38 employees is not in the three pack. He's number eight. Right. And so it's like, what are you doing? So there's a list of things that you can do. There's a report that we can run that's, that will tell you all the things that go into getting number one on Google My Business. Okay. So if you... For example, if let's say, for example, that you print T-shirts um, in Tampa, Florida, mm. some somebody who lives a mile away from you who types T-shirts, I need a T-shirt or a T-shirt printer or best T-shirts. The Google knows the geolocation of where you're sitting, and then it knows where all these businesses are, and then it says, okay, who's closest and who ranks the highest, who gets into the Google Business Three Pack. So th- that would be the first thing. All the things that you do to that, all the things that you do to get into that uh, top three, mm. it's easy to get into the top three, and then it's harder to stay there. Like where you live, Cam, the, the competition for screen printers is absolutely fierce. Oh, yeah. Absolutely fierce. Uh, a client, I just picked up a client yesterday who's a welder in Denver. Yeah. You, he, There's no one that even has a review in Google My Business. He's gonna, He's just going to push everybody out of the way. So. It has to do with your niche, and if like other niches are worse, like chiropractor, or you know a facial surgeon, you know plastic surgeon, th- th- those people, those are the people who do the ads and pay for the clicks and all that. Yeah. So, uh, one of the things that people don't do that they should that get in Google My Business is um, submit their site map to Google on a regular basis. If you don't submit your site map, Google will think that you're inactive, yeah. and it will hurt your rank. And of course, your backlinks. Um, and I've heard all different things with backlinks, like backlinks live. You you kind of do what you can do. You, you, no, none of us can spend an hour a day writing articles. Are you kidding? Right, right. There's no way. We're busy. But um, if you put up a if you put up like I can put up a blog on a site that has guest author um, capabilities, so I don't have to give you control of the whole blog. Right. That's called the micro application. Everybody should be doing that. The problem with screen printing. In my opinion, is everybody's like in, in like a silo. They don't want to share. They're afraid, you know, that somebody's going to steal their business. What's well, maybe that, they that, are? They are. <laughs> they they absolutely are. It's a very very. <laughs> I had to learn the hard way not to post client jobs on my goddamn YouTube channel because because they were getting poached. Yes. So it, it. I mean, granted, maybe that's it's, that's on me because maybe it, I just wasn't doing a good enough job to hold on to them. It's hard to say, but. Print, the screen printing world is so competitive, which is why, which is why I feel such a need to focus on, 
on really on site rank, right? Because the the phone book doesn't matter anymore. No one uses it. So Google is your phone book, and that's why I focus so heavily heavily on helping everyone else get their listing to show up as close to the top as possible. And that's why I brought you on. That's why I brought the guy right. on before. It's right. important, but it's very competitive. Now, the other thing that you can do is you can do reputation management and you can do directory management. And um, after this is over, people can go out to my website and they can do a free scan. So what's Go what Google has done is said, we are the directory. And it, they are. They own about 85% of all the traffic that's on the Internet. But there's about 50 other directories that Google partners will try to convince you you need to be correct on all these uh, other directories. Yeah. So you have consistency and and because they're Google partners they you know they they pay something to Google. Yeah. And it's true. So what you can do is you can scan uh, the person who was on last week talked or two week two times ago mm -hmm. talked about going out and and and, and editing a directory that's ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, that's just ridiculous. So what you want to do is you want to use a technological tool that's a directory manager. Mm. Uh, there's one by te there's one by Yext, Y E X T. It's about three hundred dollars a month. It's ridiculous. Yeah, I there's remember getting. I got approached by somebody years ago to uh, buy one of those services. Yeah, and it it's a good service. It's a very good service. It's very but, expensive. Three hundred dollars a month. That's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. So what we so, did was, you know, since we're host and since we have a SEO company, and since we need directories, mm -hmm. uh, you can get you can get a directory management tool that synchronizes everything. It will, it will run a test to show you where your errors are. Any type of anything that's, uh, if you go to Google and look at the way your, uh, listing is published, mm -hmm. like if it says sweet S T E, or if it just says unit B that will hurt you with Google cause it's not consistent. So we offer, a, um, we offer a helping hand in as much as, uh, we have a, a directory manager, that will manage all 50 of them and also manage your Google reviews. And that's probably the key thing for printers is when you have a customer. I got I got to interject here, though, So, because I've, um, I've been approached numerous times by all sorts of different programs and platforms, and they, and they ask me to come in. They want to manage this. They want to manage that for me. Control freak, 100% yep. control freak. What what security do I have if I let a particular platform or program not maybe not even yours but anybody else's what security do I have that you're not going to hijack my shit? So, um, yeah, this is a good point. So I had a I had a client who wanted me to help him was a screen printer, mm -hmm. and then she said I don't trust you. No one trusts so nobody words, these she days. She said I don't trust you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because, no one does because of what you're saying, right? Yeah. So. You know, I'm like, well, I can't really work with you. Like, I can't take you on as a client because as I build your site and do your SEO, I'm going to have all your passwords. Like, I'm going to have your Yelp password. I'm going to have your I'm going to have all your passwords. And if you don't trust me. Yeah. So trust is a key. And uh, I don't know. I'm pretty I'm pretty long in the tooth in this. I yeah. Mean, I go back to when there were batch files <sighs> and, and it was like config.sys. And it's just like that. Like, no one touches my passwords who I wouldn't trust to touch my underwear while I'm wearing it. Sounds funny. But like you can't unless I trust you. So it becomes yeah. a relationship. And actually, like the people that I do white glove SEO for, they have a question. They text me. I text them the answer. Yeah, that's it. And they get to so they get the help. Trusting people is key. And in the screen printing business, you actually get it because your whole customer base is based on trust. Mm -hmm. So you do a job that people trust you and then they let you run and they give you more freedom until you don't deserve it anymore. Gotcha. And that's just the way it is with SEO it, in my company. It's, it's a two way street. Like I, like I have to be able to work with you too. Like if you're right. like one gal, I just told her like this, I think this is beyond your intelligence. She got all offended. Yeah, well, <laughs> like, Hey, I can't do brain surgery either. And I can't do a C-section like other people. I'm like, right. I can only do what I know. Right. So, well, I got, I actually have a question here for you. Cause this is kind of coming into that. Um, uh, so this is from Chronic Designs, and he's asking, is is a website – this is a actually a really good question. Is it worth having a website anymore considering that everyone's just on social media? And, and like for this particular person, he says he gets more work from Facebook and Instagram than he does from his site. And I, I have my own opinions about that, but I'd love sure. to hear your opinions on that subject. So it, so it goes back to what I was mentioning before. You know, If you have an exercise board that costs a dollar to make and you can sell it for $29 – 
or $19 in Walmart, and you can see this product mm -hmm. uh, from Shark Tank, then you can do that kind of stuff because you, you can spend a dollar twenty five or you know, if you have a high end product, if you go to Yelp, you can spend eight dollars and sixty five cents per click. Right. That's ridiculous. The margins if are humongous. Yeah. The margins are so big. My pillow, look what they're doing. They spend, <laughs> some, some, you know, they spend a dollar on advertising. It's a block of phone. thousand dollars on advertising and they get two hundred thousand dollars in sales. It's worth it. Yeah. Because their margins are so high. Now in my niche, my margins aren't that big, and in your niche, they're not that big. So what you have to do is, you, you, it, here's what I say. The people that I work with are small businesses that are successful who already make money. They already have a proven business model, and I can double their folding money. Right. In a year, I can double. What, what I mean by folding money is you pay your rent, you pay your employees, you pay your taxes, you pay everything, uh -huh. and the amount of money that's left in your pocket is up 100% yeah. each year for three years so but so, so why would they go why would why would anyone in, in today's social media age build a, a a domain based website as opposed to just having their facebook page and their instagram page well you should have it all you yeah. should have it all you should have instagram you should have uh you should have a facebook account mm -hmm. you should have youtube mm -hmm. you should have all of it sure so you know youtube it, youtube is owned by google yeah so when i was talking before with my for sale by owner. That's how I got on one. That's how I got on page one of Google. Yeah. Was I, you know, I produced viral videos that showed people flying from northern New Jersey to the Empire State Building, uh -huh. and people said that's interesting, and they went to the site. So, you know, it's like a. So your site's like your base camp kind of thing. It's uh It's. it's what, so here's the thing. What you want to do in your business is you. What you want to do. Because we're talking screen printers. These, all these people are screen printers, I think. Yeah. So what you want to do is Mostly. you have to have a sales part of it, mm -hmm. right? You have to have a sales, but then you want to have a content part of it. You want to have authority. So you want to have a blog. You want to publish articles. You know, you want to talk about the shirts. I mean, mm -hmm. a shirt costs $28 now. Like, really? You're like right. $28 for a T-shirt in a store? Actually, more yeah. like 32 If you're yeah, going, I mean, If you're going premium, it's 100 bucks. Hey. In Lakewood, Colorado, where I live, there's a, a gaming arena called Local Host, 18,000 square foot gaming arena, and the, I bought T-shirts for my staff. They were they were thirty dollars each. Mm -hmm. They were thir I was like, this is a four dollar T-shirt, guys. But <laughs> right. that's okay. So you know, uh, that I, makes I, sense. I, and I, I'm gonna chime in there too. I think that um I think in my personal opinion, man, y everyone's gonna have their kind of own marketing strategy. And if Facebook and Instagram, like Instagram's direct messages, are extremely powerful, and this guy yep. doesn't take full advantage of them, I'll admit it. But you maybe you are. Having your website, though, is in my in my personal opinion, which I think is always right, <laughs> is your it's your kind of proof, proof of authenticity, if you will. Granted, your social media following and all that is is amazing. But if your site is there and it's put together well, it just kind of it lays your foundation for all of your other social activity. You know, and, you know that's I mean? that's interesting, Cam, because if you go to GT Metrics. And, and scan your site with that. If you look on that page, it lists the 1,000 top pages in the world, and they all take more than 17 seconds to load. But the difference is, That's when great. I go to Disney World, I'll wait 12 seconds for the page to load because it's Disney World. Right. But when I go to XYZ Screen Printer, I am, I'm on a mobile phone, and if it doesn't come up in four seconds, yeah. I'm not going there. And 80% of all the traffic is now on a mobile device. Right. So. You better be mobile. That means be mobile. your index page, by definition, the index page cannot be WordPress because it's four megs, it's four seconds or something. Right. So it's it's tough, it, you know. Enough. But it's very it is a complex thing, like you say. It is complex. Now here's an interesting question because Daniel Daniel Latour is asking Cam, has your WordPress site ever been hacked? When you started your website, did you invest in security right away? Well, my website, the WordPress site, 100% got hacked and it got completely redirected to a website and I had to bring my developers in to save the day. Um, does that change my opinion about WordPress? I mean, no. I What I like about WordPress, what I like about Squarespace and Wix and any of those platforms is just that it allows us people without a large team to build something that looks nice and then uh, kind of set it and forget it to some degree. So, right. so I would stick. I mean, I like WordPress, but hell to the yeah, it's been hacked, man. And if you have any kind of major rank, 
You probably will. And uh, shortly after that, I invested in security. And really what it is with WordPress, like with anything, it's usually some small security issue that hasn't been addressed or that you didn't update at the right time. And now someone was yeah. able to blunt force. They, I guess they call it blunt force hack into your shit. And then they redirect it to a porn site, which is what There's happened to mine. There's about 50 ways you can have a porn site. <laughs> so, yes, it's happened, but don't don't let it – and I think Doc's not here to try to say, oh, fuck no. WordPress. No, don't no, let no. it scare you. If, if WordPress is something that you can work with, do it, man. You know what I mean? That's just where I'm starting. That's right. because I'm familiar with it. But we're going to build plugins for all the different systems. It's just going to take time. So, yeah, that's, that's, that. that's awesome. But, yeah, but, man, I have. I actually have. Now – this is something for you, Doc. Liberty Graphics. At this point, I think web is good if your customers are ordering online, but most of our clients come straight to us. I agree. I agree. Uh, yeah, Doc, what's do yeah, what's your opinion on that? So a lot of, um, you know, and I'm sure that you've dealt with this with other clients. You have a con your local contractor down the way, and most of his business is acquired through, like, maybe word of mouth you know phone calls or maybe an email right. or something like that right so how do you address those people are, are they stuck in a lull is that as far as they're going to get with that kind of model okay so a couple of things okay first of all we're talking about your reputation so a negative review on yelp or a negative review on google mm -hmm. there's data that suggests that each negative review will cost you twenty five thousand dollars that's a problem mm -hmm. okay so what you want to do is if you have an existing customer who's loyal to you, then, of course, you know, you treat them like they're they're going to continue and you don't you don't jack up their prices like you would other people. Right. OK, but you need new customers. You need new customers, because if you just want to have a screen printing business with 100 clients that you're just going to serve over and over. But, you know. How are you going to scale that? I mean, how are you going to get to the next level? You have to get new customers. So what you're going to do is somebody's going to come to your website and they're either going to stay or they're going to bounce. So mm -hmm. you have to create a reason for them to stay. So you have to create authority and all this other stuff. So the notion is it's like a store. It's like your the index page, the front page, the home page of your website is like a storefront. You want it to be attractive and you want it to be organized. You want it to have your phone number, some way to contact you. I right. mean, I, there's people on who own screen printing companies. I cannot find their phone number. It's way down at the bottom of the page. It should be at the top. Right. So if you want new customers, the cheapest way to get new customers is in the Google, local SEO Google My Business 3-pack. That's the easiest way to do it. I agree. Because when somebody Googles on something and Google owns 85% of the traffic, they're not going to the yellow pages. Right. Unless they're over 70 years old, they're not using Yellow Pages. Right. Yellow Pages directory is controlled by Yext, which is publicly traded. So you don't need the Yellow Pages or Yext. You need all these other ones. What you need is Google to love you. So what, it's very simple. You find somebody who, like me, I listen to the Google engineers. I listen every week to Google engineers on a webinar where they are talking about how things are doing and they're leaking. Hmm. You know, just like if I came to your shop, uh, Cam, and... I was going to do a podcast. I, I would look, you know, you would leak to me, the camera, mm -hmm. or, or how you do stuff. Mm -hmm. And I would learn. So that's the advantage that I have. You know, first of all, you know, I'm real smart because I listen and I study things. But I'm not like I know how to make friends with people. So I made friends with these Google engineers who are in California, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm like, hey, just let me listen. And it is like listening to French. There's no doubt. People will say, I don't even know what they're talking about. Right. But you just, you, the way to wrestle, now here's what I used to say. How do you eat an elephant? The answer is one bite at a time. That's right. <laughs> but your business isn't an elephant. Your business is a skyscraper. So how do you eat a skyscraper? You get a bunch of friends and you eat it one bite at a time. But you can't do it by yourself. It's a skyscraper. Right. So you have to get a, you have to get a team. So the notion is you build a team, you build relationships. We already have, you already have the relationships. Mm -hmm. So you, you know, you can use your uh, influence and say, what do you need guys? And then you could communicate to people like me. They, what they need is a podcast that shows this, mm -hmm. you know, if you like, if you like, uh, uh, picks, is it called picks? If you like any of those content builders, Foursquare or whatever it's oh, called. Oh yeah. Wix, Wix. Yeah, Wix. Yeah, Foursquare, and yeah. uh, what's the other one called? Uh, Wix. Space. Squarespace, yeah, Squarespace and Shopify. Squarespace is thirty-five dollars a month. Yeah, it's expensive. That's insane. Yeah, that's insane. Yeah. Because so Shopify is even more. 
Wix, you, Wix is affordable. If, this is what I maintain. If you create an asset folder that has your pictures, yeah. you know, certain sizes, and you create a, you know, you create a Word document that has your a hundred word description of your website of your business and a five hundred word description of your business. Yeah, I could have, your website could be up in two hours. Right, I agree. I, my problem is when I build a website, I have to create a, a favicon, I have to create all these logos. It, you know, you go down the rabbit hole. Yeah. So the trick is, the trick is to like kind of be organized. So like for me, the way I do it is uh, the way I do it is I, I, I'll type things out. I don't know if you can see this, but so this is from the, this is from this morning. Can you see that page? Yeah. So that's all the links. It has all the different titles and the links. So I, cause I'm dyslexic cause I'm dyslexic. I can't type that over and over. So I copy and paste. That's and what, what is, I do. what is that for? That's for a particular website. Yeah, that's for that's for my Space Voyage campsite because we're putting in a credit card processor. Okay. And then I do this. I do this. This is my tennis shoe PDA. Okay. So I just write I just write shit down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I do this. Here's my little tennis <laughs> shoe. Who that, am I? Them, you see me? Them scribbles look like my scribbles in my notebook. Illegible. Yeah, scribbles, Illegible. Who cares? <laughs> who cares? I have twenty of them. Okay. And uh there was a screen printer in the early nineties who gave me a price for T shirts. It was really low, and I wrote it down. And then a year later, I went back. He goes, yeah. He goes, how do you remember that? Right. I, like, I wrote it down. Well, you see, I got so, someone in here. Um, and this, I know Hotbox, he's, he's a lot like me. He's kind of a WordPress advocate. And it, he does make a lot of notes. Oh, gosh, man. It's every damn time. He makes, he's making a lot of mentions just about how WordPress is so well documented and stuff that it, it really – it really yes. is a good platform to get started. It is a good if you, platform. It's if you're platform. just if it, if you're just trying to get started, it's the best place yeah. to start. Here's the biggest. Here's here's the truth about WordPress. It is a good platform. I'm not saying it isn't. Yeah. What the here's the challenge. Every time every time you use WordPress open source, then somebody authors a plugin. Mm -hmm. Then a bunch of kids who are 14 years old in Romania, yeah, and Serbia. They figure out the back door, and there is a back door into that plugin because the author who wrote the plugin has a backdoor into that program. Right. And then those hackers find the backdoor and it's what the FBI did to get into the iPhones. They couldn't break into the iPhone, so they created an app uh -huh. that was an update to the iPhone that the iPhone accepted. Right. And then it downloaded all the data. So the problem with the so the problem with your WordPress plugins, you have to have plugins. Yeah, I agree. Each plugin is overhead. Each right. plugin is overhead. Yeah, yeah. So it is. Each, so each overhead slows your site down. Yeah, so, every plugin you install adds more more code to the header and it starts loading There are things you can do with a WordPress plugin. You can use these CDNs, which basically stores your website, different parts of the country and the world, yeah. makes it go faster. Got one. You can also encourage everybody to keep, you know, don't change the website, and then it goes into the cache of the person's computer. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so when you when you go there the first time, it's slow, but then the next time it goes faster. Right. Um, for me... It's like a no-brainer. Like, like the amount of time it's going to take you to learn how to use a theme, which isn't even yours. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, that's why Mobilize. You can just do any of it. You can say, I want you. I want to use a business theme, or I want to use um, whatever. Gotcha. But, you know, there. It's kind of like, how do you like your eggs? Like, do you like scrambled eggs? Over I hard, like baby. Eggs. Over hard. If it ain't it's over hard, I don't want ways it. Ways we can make these not eggs. eggs. So. The trick would be, wouldn't be like getting caught up on you know winners losers like you you're a WordPress guy or I'm not. Yeah. Would be like how do we make the site load fast? It's really pretty. All the links work. Right. Like there's no 404 errors that say page not found. Right. And there's no spelling errors and typos and everything. And that's the that's the attractiveness of WordPress because it's just and there and there is a there's a company right now called Dragify. Uh -huh. And I bought it. It's a drop. It's a drag and drop. WordPress theme builder. Yeah. The learning curve is 100 hours. <laughs> yeah, I use X theme. It's very similar. It's a very it's 100 steep hours to curve. learn it. Yeah. It's de so, steep. you know, it's like, you know, wow. So, um, it that's it's toughy. But the other thing that I would point out here is that it used to be a time where the web press was kind of like having a business card. And, you know, whether we had a nice business card or not didn't matter. Yeah. It has this has to be budgeted for like you actually have to have a budget now if you want to be if you want to grow your company and you want to get to six figures yeah like you want to make a hundred thousand dollars after your um your net like, you know your net yeah so your gross is two hundred and fifty thousand and after you paid your employees you actually made eighty thousand dollars profit yeah like now 
okay, now if you just want to say you're in business and just pay your bills and do whatever you want, but you're not going to, the problem is there's, there's going to be more and more competition. So you're going to have to be faster. Gotcha. Very That's good. That's where WordPress fails. But I, you know, I, 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 I'll tell you when, when my test site went down and I'm the host and I can't figure out why it won't come up. It's just got a spinning wheel on the screen. Yeah. And I ask my text and they say, go look at the code. And it, it, there's no code. It just says silence is golden. That's all it says. <laughs> right, right. It, it's not even an HTML. <laughs> yeah. So that was, like, that was someone that came yeah. in and rerouted. Yeah. yeah. You know, so, it, but you can, for a very small fee, you can buy a plugin that will back up your site every day. Yeah. And then if it goes down, you just, you, and they, that, I swallow hard when I say this. Uh, with MobiRise, they can't hack your site because you FTP it up. You use you use FileZilla or WSFTP. Uh -huh. But it but it's different in as much as like WordPress. You're actually logging into the. So server you have to FTP with with that one. You have to FTP everything, all your images up into it. You can't. There's not an uploader directly, or it, you have well, to. There is an up, there there is an uploader directly, but with MobiRise, what you want to do is you want to create the site. Yeah. And then you want to use a program by Steve Riches out of uh, the UK. Uh huh. You want to use a program by Steve Riches called MobiClean Pro, which takes all the code. It, it would do it for a WordPress site too. Okay. It takes, it fixes the code, it grooms the code, and it optimizes all the images. So, I'm gonna look into this. Site, I, I would say MobiRise sounds. It actually sounds amazing. Uh, well, well, you could still use like Mo, This guy Steve Riches is a genius. He, mm -hmm. He's from UK, but he lives in Thailand, mm -hmm. and uh, he's he's like an author, and uh, so he has all these software tools micro applications but moby clean pro i got to be like the main alpha beta tester on it so i kept adding features and everything yeah but you could take moby clean pro and you could basically take any a folder that is wordpress or any other html or anything else and you could do global replaces you know like change the uh copyright from 2019 to 2020 okay that is a real pain to do that okay. so um interesting there isn't the thing is that's really frustrating is it's, it's so, this is so similar to screen printing because there isn't a right one little silver bullet. It's a process. Right. So like, how do we do this? Like, ha, like, I like I was mortified when I last week I was listening to somebody say, you know, spray mist on the ink. I was mortified. <laughs> then uh, Mitch said, you know, go slow to go fast and then run like a banshee. Yeah, which yeah. I was like, right on. When you're doing live screen printing, you go as fast as you can. That's true. So it doesn't close. But um, you know, I I think. What you what you want to do is you want to be real. There is no perfect. There's no perfect. Yeah. And if you decide to use MobiRise, if you do decide to test out MobiRise, they keep coming out with new versions and they have a forum. And the dirty little secret about MobiRise is it's created by a bunch of authors who are super talented in the Netherlands. Okay. And I, I own their software. Uh, they this company was the company that uh, invented the Wow slider. You know the, the pictures that move across the screen. Yeah, I they remember those. That's so 2005. Right, it's old, <laughs> but it's, they, they they invented that. Right. Anyway, so Moby Rise is like four version 4.9.6. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. And it, I use version 4.7.7 .7 because it's the new versions have bugs, and right. they're they're using everybody who uses it as a test bed. That's how you do it's, it. That's how you. That's, that's how, how you, you make it. shit work but well. If yeah. you, but if you want a site that's stable and right. doesn't, you know, that works, then you you kind of you, it's the same thing as they. That's the same the problem with WordPress too, though. Is when they do these updates and stuff like that, you're technically beta testing it, and that's when a lot of the times you will get hacked is on a new update and things of that nature. I think too that I want to just re really quickly right. reiterate because. Uh, I, I do the same thing, man. I, I almost fear monger. Uh, I want everybody that's watching and listening to understand that any any platform will cut it. What Doc's trying to do is is maybe steer you in in a direction that's more future proof, like with something like Moby Rise and stuff like that. But if you're using WordPress, it's still awesome. That's right. That's and right. It, and and no matter what you do when it comes to the internet, dude, th there's always risk of some somehow your shit falling apart and breaking on you. So don't let any of it stop you from moving this way or that way. Just wanted well, to reiterate it, you know, on that. When you in a modern in a modern uh, website, if you look back to my websites, because uh, I'm a, I own a hosting company, I can actually look into my control panels and see how big these sites are. Yeah. If I go back to like 2010. <laughs> The average website was like six megabytes. Now, just the code, just right. the code for one micro application to recognize, is this a retina screen or is it a desktop? That's 12 megs just for that code. So 
it, it makes everything like there's a lot. It's bigger. It's all different. Oh, yeah, and it the, is. It doesn't really matter. It, it's kind of like, you know, my Saab 95, like I, I don't have to fix it. Mm-hmm. Like I don't I just have to turn the key and then I have to right. like be able to frame a question of my mechanic of what is doing. Right. And that's kind of where we're going. And the, the reason that I say just start with the low hanging fruit, start with the things that are really obvious, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. like like Yoast. Get a paid version of Yoast. Yeah, Yoast is awesome. You know? I like Yoast. Get yeah. get WP Cloak. You know, get WP Cloak. It will change WP Dash Admin to something else. So mm. when somebody just goes to your site, they won't be able to get in. Uh, go, find some site auditors. I mean, I have all of them, so I can tell you. I've never heard of that one. I didn't even think to redirect. So it redirects from the WP slash admin or so hyphen what, admin. Uh, so WP Cloak, all it does is it's a plugin, right? It's right. a security plugin. Okay. And what it does is it's a paid version, so it'll cost you like $40 a year or something. Um, what it does is it goes in and it renames everything. It renames all the different folders that are standard names. So, you know, if we go in, if we have indexes not turned off on your website, we can go in and steal all your images. Right. You know, so which um, you really can't stop people from stealing your content anyway. Right. Uh, If they really want your content, they can do it, but Mm. you can make it harder for them. Right. But I, my thing, my, I'm not really here to push uh, Moby Rise. I'm here to communicate to the screen printers like hey man i'm trying to become one of you like i'm trying to do water-based live screen printing mm-hmm. i need help <laughs> if you're a screen printer and you 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 want to do a little bit you teach me something uh, don't ask Andy, me because i'm being tight-lipped about my live screen printing well no my i mean i got no don't problem ask. signing a nda you know uh-huh. you should everybody should sign an nda non-disclosure agreement uh-huh. but now, now tell me to now tell me to poop because you know i signed an nda so i can't tell nobody all right right and, and uh, you, I, you have to be careful with, you know, I, I, my personal opinion is since I do everything white glove, I'll tell you, it becomes really boring, though. It's like listening to Cam talk about, a, uh, you know, store management software. <laughs> you know, you <laughs> hey, you love it. I, I love it. Hey, everyone loves it. It's slow. You know, it's just, and you have to recognize it's a slow grow. Yeah. But um, but you got to get into Google Business three pack. That's the key. And you got to submit your site map, uh, you know. And if your site isn't HTTP, HTTPS, you're yeah. not going to be on Google. Right, it's true. You know? yeah, That's yeah, encrypting yeah, yeah. it so people can't steal your data. Right. Um, things like that. And there, and you can even go faster. I mean, if you're a tech, if you're out there and you're a tech, you, you can actually build, what, you can use Google code and build an AMP site that Google wrote that code. And then it, you get your, Google loves you. Right but on. it's more comp- it's even more complicated than anything else. So you want to start like maybe start simple. Now let me ask you this: What do you what are your predictions for web in the in the next five ten years? Where do you see the internet and all this stuff going? What what platforms are we going to need to be on moving forward? So you're going to have voice search. People are going to be talking. They're going to do voice search. Voice. Uh, a page uh, index pages that don't load in 1.4 seconds, like 1.0 seconds is the holy grail. You know, the one that I showed you that I did this morning, I never, I tested it right before I came on. It's 1.1 seconds. Wow, that's and It has crazy. a big, it has a 1920 by 700 picture in it. Right. But I know how to optimize it, so I know where to take it to make it smaller okay. and all that. But um, so what? So what's the future hold? Everything's going to be mobile. Fast mobile so You're still going to have desktop. But, yeah. you know, the, the, the um, code... The way in a, the way a websites look on a desktop is not the way they look on a phone. Yeah. So, so, uh, for example, um, you can go out and you can take your page, uh, the URL for your page, mm-hmm. the address, and you can put it into a online cloud thing. It, it will show you how it will look across all the different devices, yeah. whether it's a small screen, you know. So yep. you don't have to buy all those different devices. Yeah, but even you, even websites are starting to almost be, they're so fluid in the way that they they're almost becoming mobile apps. They're just you access them through the web page, through yeah, the browser, and, but they and, really uh, are web apps. Right. And Google Google's AMP uh, if you if you Google something and you see a circle with a little blue lightning bolt in it, that's AMP code. And yeah, I mean in a perfect world, I would tell you Here's what I would tell you in a perfect world, your index page would be Google AMP. You're go- that will put you into Google My Business 3 pack just having that. Then your site for your blog and your site for your merch store, and your site for all those folders would be Moby Rise, HTML, Bootstrap 5, and then your 
your micro applications that do your um, Camera Urban Store Manager. Yeah, that would be in that would be in WordPress and your blog itself. That's what WordPress is. It's a blog, so that would be perfect for that. Well, for the plugin, uh, there's no way that I'm just gonna. I'm not. Yeah, I'm gonna go with whatever platforms work. We're gonna develop them as plugins for every platform. So right. if it turns out like, say, for instance, Moby Rise is a big platform and a, a very good one, then we'll develop one for that as well. It just takes time. Yeah. Everything takes time. Most of the, so the future is gonna be faster. Um, there's gonna be you know you look at how many images there are. It's just ridiculous. Yeah, it's it's gonna be more video. Mm -hmm. I mean, you look at how much video is being produced. There's going to be more and more video. There's going to be way more people doing uh, what you do, what you do with screencasts and podcasts. There's going to be more like Udemy.com. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I I I have 99 Udemy courses. 99. Jesus. I mean, that's ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, that's ridiculous. <laughs> but when they're seven dollars, I'm I'm in. When they when they sell them for seven dollars, like I have a list, not not two hundred. So. Um, very good. You know, site speed is sites site speed is going to be it, and you know, probably content's going to be important. Yeah, I'd say so. I think content's a big one. Uh, right on, man. Well, uh, thank you so much for that. Hey, uh, they had some questions in here, but I feel like I was mixing them in as we were working our way down the list here. Uh, give me one sec here, you guys. If you have any other questions about site development or or just site creation in general be sure to throw them into the uh, chat right now okay so here's got we got one from uh, freshly pressed printing he has a client who specifically made his website not work on a desktop it only works on mobile devices weird but maybe that's the way things are going yeah so you're uh, so you're only going to sell t-shirts to people who write with the right hand right it's crazy yeah like just being so uh, okay. specific. I mean, it's, it's America. You can do whatever you want. You, right. know, you can do whatever you want. But, um, it, like, but I I don't totally disagree with that strategy because, like, for example, in my SEO company, some people say I want to give you a credit card, and I'm like, you have to use PayPal. Right. And they're like, well, we don't we don't use PayPal. Well, then you can't use me because hmm. your attitude towards technology is fearful. Like, you don't trust PayPal. Like, that is crazy. Right. But, and and people have told me, well, you should take their credit card, but. It, it it it's a choice thing. It's kind of up to you. Right. You, so sometimes it's okay to limit yourself. You know what I mean? I mean, it's okay to be yeah. crazy about whatever you want to do. Yeah. yeah. Want, sometimes you know, limitations want, are man. sometimes limitations are actually the pathway to to like excelling at something is but putting see, limitations is, is on like, your Here's shit. my thing, and everybody listening, your website should make you money. Right. All my none of my clients say give me all the reports. I mean, there's 20 reports. I can load you up. We don't need any of the reports. They don't ask me. You know why? Because <laughs> they're making money. Right, they're making right. more money last month than they made the month before. They don't have to say how many people went to the site. That's I true. Give them all that. Yeah. Here's and what it, they want to know. Am I making more money? Do I feel good about it? <laughs> yeah. And sometimes it matters. I, it depends on the, like, the enterprise level that you're in. But I think, yeah, at the, in the beginning, it's just like, dude, are we making more with this product than we were without it? Are we having an easier time with this product than we were before well, we had it? Well, here's the thing, though. If Those you're, are good like, metrics to start with. Like, uh, like, okay, here's the thing. Like, you're charging, uh, you know, like when you started, you undercut everybody to get the business. Oh, yeah, I did. Got a, then you got a rep. Whoops. You have a strong reputation. Now, you, now people want you. You can charge more. Yeah. And that's what you do. That's American capitalism. You start <laughs> where you start. You prove you can do it. You prove your value. Value added and all that good stuff. You yeah. prove, you know, if you text me, I'm going to text you back. I mean, that's just the way it is. Right. Because that's the way it is. But the whole notion is it's a it's a real capitalist model. Like we're here to make money. That's what a business is about. Mm. So why don't you use all the tools that are legal <laughs> to make as much money as you can so you can give it away? Like if you make enough money, you should give it away. That's what I do. Give so it I, away. Find I, some people who need it. This is a good opportunity for you because – uh, I know that you told me early on that you have some tools uh, that you would really like to m maybe recommend. And, of course, once once we get off of this, we're going to put links to all those in the description of this video. But what are some of – let's just get links, web okay. addresses, for the for the tools that you think everybody listening here should use or would be okay. at least useful for them to look into. Okay, so for a snapshot of your website, uh, GT Metrics is what you want. GT Metrics is, you know, GT – can you see it on there? Yep. GT, G, G, you can search G, GT metrics. It just, they do about 10,000 of these things a day. So that's yeah. a good one. All right. Um, if you want to scan your directories, you can go anywhere. You can go to Yext and they'll do a directory scan. 
it's very simple. You just go to you go to Google and you get the specific information that represents your business, the exact address, how it's in Google, phone number, business name. You enter it. If you don't want to use Yext because they're going to hound you, they're going to call you. Oh, we want to sell you this. So use my scanning tool. No one will hound you. I won't call you or anything. Okay. And the, uh, so the email address for that is on my site, which is Doc Palmier SEO. So you just type in scan s c a n dot doc palmier seo dot com. Okay. It will take you. It will just take you to a page, and you enter the data, and then it will it will uh, basically email, you're going to put in your email, and okay. it will send you a, a link to a report that will show you how well you uh, are consistent across all the directories. Okay. And um. And we'll put a link to all this in the description at and that's the end of this. Free. Okay. That's free. Okay. And it only um, costs you your email address. So not a bad email deal. So I own a hosting company. So I own, I have four thousand email addresses. But the only email address that goes to my iPhone is just one. Okay. Several are forwarded. So I, my email address is doc underscore palmier, mm -hmm. like Palmer with an E. Doc palmier, doc underscore palmier at yahoo.com. Okay. And um, I would be here's what, I would be delighted, I would be delighted to. Uh, every, anybody that you influence that's on your um, on this live stream, I would be delighted to help anybody improve your score because you're going to make more money. Okay. And when you make more money, you're going to be happy. And you have to be happy. Um, and you have to find people you can trust. And I understand, you know, there's a real problem with trust. I mean, in 2018, I fired 18 vendors. 18. Mm -hmm. I fi I actually fired DirecTV after 22 years. Don't and need them no more. Comcast, and I can talk to Comcast. I can talk to Remote Control and say, show me this. It's right. amazing. Right so um, anyway, right on, if brother. I can be of service, people can uh, contact me. I don't really – I don't take on new clients. I'm not here to take on new clients. I'm not here. I'm too busy. I, I'm, I'm really too busy. But um, I was supposed to be on March 13th, right? Yeah, and yeah. Then we lost power. Yeah, you we had lost power, power issues. Twenty eight hours. My house was without power for twenty eight hours. Right on. Yeah, yeah. That that didn't go well, but we got you in today, man. I appreciate yeah, you showing so I'm, up. I'm glad. To, I'm happy to help. Okay, my friend. And uh, thank you guys, everyone, for tuning in uh, for today's live show. Uh, all of the links and everything will be in the description of this video. Um, shout out to everybody that made it in, man. I know that uh, y'all are busy, and this is a really, really weird time slot for all of us. So. I'm just testing stuff out, man, trying to figure out what the best time slot is. But guess what? The audio was good. No echoes. No technical difficulties. I'd call that a win for the print fam and for Killer Cam, your print, uh, one of the print fam members. Anyway, thanks, guys, so much for hanging with us. Uh, Doc, do you have any uh, last words before we wrap this sucker up? No, just uh, small steps and do something. Right on, my friend. Thank you. Uh, and you guys are the best, man. We'll see you next Wednesday, 6 p.m. Uh, no, 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 3 p.m. Mountain Standard Time right here on the Print Life YouTube channel. Uh, make sure to share, 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 share all my content. One more thing. I've been taking a – I keep saying this, man. It's like I start making the videos and then I take a break, making videos, take a break, making videos. Uh, I am not – making youtube videos right now but they will be uploaded again shortly and we'll get back on track with that guys so just hang in there with me see you on the next one peace out